Hey everyone. <clears throat> Good morning. Oh man. Uh, time to make a car commute video. It's dark, it's rainy, it's early as hell, and I don't know. I got my camera set up. It's kind of getting this, you know, not the full picture, but plus my dog air freshener is going to be in the way. So I apologize for that. If I could try to move it, I'll move it. But right now, I, you know, I don't really have any uh, stoplights too often that I could, you know, play around. But uh, anyway, let's get to it. Um, I'm driving to work earlier than usual because I'm going to hit up the gym at work and get a workout in before work. And then obviously I'll do my daily Tesla Coney video and then I'll start work and then I'll work out at lunch and then I'll go back to work and then I can get the heck out of there. And then that's my day. Um, obviously at home is another story, another job there. So, but what should we talk about for the first car podcast with my, uh, my vent holder, which it's magnetic to the back of the phone, which is pretty cool. Uh, but again, I'm working on a good setup. I don't even know what that, there you go. I can see a little now. So it gets, I guess it gets me. So I'll have to give it to my air freshener. It's a, if you do see it, it's my dog. Uh, it's an actual picture of my dog. Uh, it's very old, about 15, 16 years old now. Um, but it's, uh, this, I've had it for a while, so I could probably get rid of it at this point because it doesn't smell anymore. But anyway, um, what are we talking about? We're talking about, let's talk about Tesla, right? Tesla, right away, boom. Tesla earnings, uh, miss, again, missed on EPS, missed on revenue. And, you know, they didn't miss by a lot, but you would think they did. Like, the problem with Tesla stock, man, oh man. When they go up, they go up. When they go down, they go... I mean, it went down, what, 12% yesterday? That is completely ridiculous. Completely freaking ridiculous. Like, what in the hell? So, I don't know, man. You guys know Tesla better than me. But that was rough, man. As a Tesla, as a Tesla shareholder, you don't care, right? So, you're probably waiting for this opportunity to buy down your your average is probably so low you know that this is considered a dip but it still increases your average but you'll buy in at these opportunities and that makes sense to play tesla at earnings is honestly a genius move again i'm no trader i'm not a swing trader i'm not a day trader but tesla is honestly a really good stock to make money swing trading swing trading that's what i'm noticing so, um, now let's talk about Tesla. So, Tesla went down yesterday. Uh, I think Tesla went down 12. Tesla went down 10 or 11. So, Tesla, Tesla is in the $8 range. Uh, obviously, you know, this is not where we want to be, okay? The, the, the days of, uh, oh, what a deal, what a deal, what a deal. You know, most of us are kind of like, you know, we're over that. We're just waiting for the recovery. But the recovery is not coming. Now, days like yesterday are very damaging uh, to a fund like Tesla because it can go down 10, 12% one day, but how is it gonna recover? That is the most important part, right? The, the, what it, you know, when the stock goes down, that's not important. Like that, we know what's gonna happen. We're gonna go down with the stock. Of course, we're going to earn options premium on the way down, but we know we're going to go down the same percentage because we hold a synthetic which matches the movement of the underlying. So going down is not the question. It's how, you know, how they get back up is the question. How will Tesla recover? Will it be a slow recovery? Will it be a fast recovery? And, you know, those, how that happens is really, you know, very important as a Tesla shareholder. Now, so that's one thing. And the other thing is, how will the fund managers play it this time around? 
So, you know, last time around when there was a big dip, you know, in this range, um, they did not play it right. Um, they kept playing close in the money calls, giving us almost no chance to take advantage of the capital uh, recovery. So we essentially got like almost none of the capital recovery. So that was bad. And that is why, you know, that, that does some damage over time. So now this time around, we'll talk about current picture. Okay, we're in the $8 range. Okay, we're still, um, you know, to, to, just so you guys know, make you, if you wanna make yourself feel a little better, if you own Tesla and you don't plan on selling, just calculate your yield on cost, okay? Of course it's not the 50 to 60% because your average, I'm sure, is not $8. But what is it? I did mine, I think it was around 40% um, based on the last payment. So if my yield on cost is still 40% and I'm not selling, I really, you know, I can't be mad, right? I can't, I, I still can't be mad because I'm getting 40% return on my original investment. Now that is good, that is really, really good. However, I do not want my yield on cost to go down over time, right? It's gone down to date and I can, I can weather that storm because my starting yield was so massive, you know, I'm okay with slight dips here and there, right? So, but if it continues to drop drastically and my yield on cost goes down to say 5% one day, then it kind of defeats the purpose of investing in this fund, right? Um, but, you know, that it, that would take a long time. They'd have to screw up a lot. Uh, you know, things would have to go way wrong for that to happen. So I'm not too worried about that. There's that, plus I could always average down, you know, more, more so to help out the, you know, the uh, yield on cost, which again, I do not plan on doing because I am so highly allocated in um, testing. Again, I have to get, I have to lower the allocation because I need to be more diversified. If I was more diversified, this pounding that Tesla and Tesla are taking right now would be essentially irrelevant to me, right? I'd be like, all right, whatever. I mean, sure, I'll cover it, but you know, it won't, it won't hurt me as much, right? It won't hurt my capital as much. It won't me, you know. But then again, that's, I guess, the good part about, you know, when I make a daily video, if I have a good investment in the fund I'm talking about, it gives it a little more, uh, I'll say, character, right? You know, if I'm talking about a fund that I have no money in or no interest in, then what's, what's the point, right? Really, do you really care if someone has an opinion on a fund and they're not investing in it? I wouldn't, you know? It's kind of hypocritical in a way. So, but anyway, I shouldn't have 50%, maybe, okay, 5, 5% is good, you know, 5, 10% at most. But again, it depends how many funds you own, things like that. Um, oh, this rain is so annoying. You know when it rains, but it's not, a, you know, it's not a lot, but it's just enough to make it very annoying and hard to see. Yeah, that's what it's doing right now. So, so anyway, um, let's keep an eye on this recovery. I can tell you right now, uh, sneak preview on the daily video, they sold a call going into next week, uh, and it's about 2.6% out of the money, okay? They dropped 12% in a day, they're selling 2%, 2.6% out of the money on six, six trading days. Um, they did not use all the contracts, that is the plus. However, they're going out of the money 2.6% still. After this massive drop, they're going out of the money 2.6%. And guess what, they didn't have to because their IV was higher. This was the chance to go a little further out of the money and capture the same amount of premium we've been getting, but they did not. It's like, you know, I just want to sometimes bang these people in the head. Like, what are you doing? You know, like seriously, we just dropped 12%. You know, we just dropped 12 freaking percent. Do you think we're going to do it again tomorrow? I don't know. Maybe. Apparently they do. So. Again, the, the thing with Tesla, again, I notice, 
I've been tracking it for as long as I've been looking at Tesla at least. It has a fast recovery, all right? And we don't know when it's gonna happen. It could happen today. It could jump back up 5% today. And guess what? If it jumps back up 5% today, we're gonna be underwater 2.5% going into next week, okay? So they harp on producing the most income that they want, yet they sell so damn close to the money that they could lose money on that trade anyway. So, and for those people that get mad when I bitch and I'm always wrong and they're always right, I get that, believe me, I get that. But the times that they're not, it hurts us so bad that this is why we're in the position we are. We have to play the Tesla fund a little different. We do, we do, okay? It's just, I mean, again, this is my opinion. This is not financial advice by any means. I'm not a financial advisor. This is, uh, you know, fun and entertainment, we'll call it, right? So hopefully everyone's having fun as I bitch about the percentage out of the money calls. But as I said, the good part is they only use about a little less than half the contracts. So they're going to see how today goes. But, you know, we'll see how far out of the money they go. They go another two percent. I'm probably going to be bitching tomorrow uh, on tomorrow's video, so uh, you know, be wary of that. Again, you saw, or maybe you didn't, but I made a video on Tesla versus Tesla, which shows why Tesla did not recover when Tesla went up. Okay, and it's very clear that their calls are the why. You know, that is that is the reason. And it's understandable if, if Tesla goes up 10% in one week and say we all, okay, we did 5% out of the money. Okay, we captured half. But when they're going 10% out of the money and we're capturing 2%, that shit ain't cool, man. That ain't, that ain't cool at all. That's actually effed up, you know? It's not right. Um, but again, I don't know, man. Tesla is just a, this is just, it's a rough fund. Tesla is a, that is the toughest stock to play options on. I mean, this is why we pay them, of course, but um, I wanna see them, you know, hopefully next week is not the recovery week, you know, for our sake, because they're already 2% out of the money. So if next week is recovery week, we're already missing out. Um, but, hopefully they play it right on the recovery and hopefully it is a slow recovery you know if they go up two percent a week for five weeks and guess what we have all the upside potential we capture all the upside potential okay so that's good however knowing tesla we, you know that that is not it's just not going to happen and it's just hard to play it's really hard to play but again my suggestion which nobody cares what I think, but is scatter the calls, do three or four. Um, you know, the lowest one, okay, you can go close to the money. I'm good with that. I gotta get on this. These people are really driving really slow. I mean, I drive, I'm in no rush um, in the morning to get to work, but some people just drive so slow. It's like ridiculous. What the, what the heck was I saying? Yeah. So no, scatter, just scatter them. Three, four calls, not two calls, not one call. Let's do three, four calls, you know. We have to with Tesla. Tesla is just out of control, right? It's, it's, it's nuts. 2% out of the money, fine, that's one of four. 4% out of the money, okay. 6% out of the money, okay. 8% out of the money, yeah. Yep. Okay, but we won't yield as much. Well, guess what'll happen though? We'll, you know, we'll preserve some capital so our yield on cost will still be yielding a respectable amount, you know? It's not just about the new investors, guys. You need to look out for the old investors. And us old investors, you know, we bought in at $16. Hello, $16, you know? So, it's a, uh, I don't know, they're probably gonna piss me off this time around too. And they're just, if they're not gonna run this right, then it's just, I don't know, man. They, they gotta do it, they gotta be smart. As long as my yield on cost, like I said, I think I made a, 
think I talked about this. But as long as my yield on cost is, what, 25%, 20%, oh my God, sorry for the dog air freshener, um, then I'm still, you know, making my money. Eventually I'm gonna make my money back, but, you know, the problem with that is I still don't wanna sell because if I make my money back, if they pay back my original investment, all from distributions and all return of capital, guess what happens when I sell? I pay capital gains on the entire amount because my yield on cost, I mean, sorry, my average cost basis will be zero. So that is the issue with that. So I'm sort of in a buy and hold forever mode on Tesla. Um, and I just want them to not screw it up too bad. That's all I ask, don't screw it up. I know we're not gonna capture all the upside. Obviously, we're not gonna capture all the upside. But I wanna capture some of the upside. So, that was that was way too long of a Tesla rant, I think. Um, sorry, guys. Um, what else? What else we wanna talk about? Um, I did a quick video uh, on Fepi, if you guys wanna check it out. Uh, Fepi is certainly, uh, you know, they own Tesla and they own, you know, 15 stocks. They own eight core stocks, seven, seven other stocks, and, and they sell covered calls. They actually own the funds too. So since you own the funds, any of those stocks, they pay dividends, we're gonna get that dividend. And guess what? They're gonna sell covered calls, you know, a little out of the money, okay? Which is good. And Tesla's a part of it. So we're still capturing the Tesla IV on Fepi, which is really good. And honestly, you're better off doing that, man. You're better off ha having Tesla, Tesla as part of a, a basket. You know, if you, uh, on its own, man, nobody, nobody control that, especially the Tesla, Tesla fund manager. But, um, but yeah, it's, uh, Fepi's a good one, man. Fepi, that's a good apple right there. Uh, check it out. Check out that video. And I, I talked about uh, in my video in Discord the other day, kind of changing things. Because my taxable account, as you know, this is going to be used for income now. Okay? The reason it's in a taxable is not because I like paying taxes. It's because I want to use it for income now. At what point? That's debatable. Um, maybe when my wife quits her job and stays home with the kids then yes, maybe at that point, I will have to flip the switch and use all of that as income to pay the mortgage, to pay whatever, to pay whatever it can pay, okay? That is the point of that fund, okay? Or, if, you know, if we can manage without, I'll just reinvest it. Um, and, you know, probably won't be able to put any new money in. Um, but still, either way. But that's why that money's in a taxable. It's gonna be used at some point. And I have no problem doing that. And then I have two other accounts, okay? I have my 401k, which, you know, I've been investing in for about 16 years now, um, since I was 24. And, you know, I've been monitoring, managing it. It's done pretty well. Um, that is into the high aggressive growth funds because I cannot touch that until, well, they say 59 and a half, but there's the rule. <clears throat> I don't know if you guys know this. 401ks is called something called a rule of 55. If you quit your job at 55, you can use the money from the 401k. So that, you know, again, that's that's a plus. I'm 41 right now, so that's that's still 14 years away. Um, you know, so I gotta keep that in mind. So that's why I don't care. I'm I'm still aggressive as hell. Aggressive growth, aggressive growth, all of it, right? Probably to the bitter end, man. I don't give a crap. Because I was in... In the beginning, you know, they tell you, oh, do this mix, do this mix. Uh, no, thank you. I'm doing this mix. I'm losing out on all these gains. Sure, if you're in aggressive growth, it's high risk. But guess what? The high reward, man, is it's enough to, to capture the upside. So, anyway, my 401k, I can't do anything with it. I am very limited. So, I have like, you know, 12 index funds that they force you to choose from. So, that is what it is. I'm not going to, you know... That's my growth investing, okay? That is my growth stocks, my growth investing. And then I have my wife's 401k. Um, by the way, both 401ks are Roth 401ks. 
Um, her 401k is much, much better because you can t hit a switch and now make it a broker select plan. And what that means is you're allowed to invest in what you want. I mean, it sounds like, well, whoopie do, no. Not, like my company doesn't do that. They don't let me invest in what I want. They force me to invest in the index funds that are given to me. And it's ridiculous that they do that. It's like ridiculous. If you think about it, it's ridiculous. But anyway, I'm not gonna get into that too much, but my wife's 401k allows you to invest in whatever the hell you choose. So, what I was doing for the past couple years, few years, I was investing in uh, dividend growth funds, okay? Individual stocks, dividend growth. These are stocks that, have, that pay a dividend, doesn't matter what yield, they pay a dividend, they grow their dividend, and they can support their dividend, okay? These are the companies that I want. These are the companies long-term that I want me, you know, I wanna live off of because I trust them, especially the dividend growth, man, that is so important. So that's what I was using that for. And then as time goes on, you know, that strategy, that works great. It works great. Doing only that strategy works great. The problem is you need about $5 million for it really to really work, okay? Uh, and realistically, am I going to have $5 million at retirement? No, I'm not going to. If I work till 67, probably, but there ain't no way in hell I'm working till 67. Will I have 1 million, maybe 2 million? Possibly. Um, I don't know. We'll see what the markets do. I don't know. But I don't want to be locked in on a price like that. Well. Will I have 500,000? Hell yeah, I will. So, you know, I definitely will. Can I live off 500,000 with dividend growth stocks alone? No, I cannot. Can I live off 500,000 if I start to buy some high yielders in my account? Absolutely, I can. So, my plan when I retire, and I've been thinking about this, is I'm gonna do a mix. I'm gonna do about a quarter, 25%, of all of my money in um, dividend growth stocks, okay? I'm gonna do a quarter, 25%, in real estate investment trusts, these are called REITs, you know, both, both of which I consider safe investments. You know, to the average investor, um, you know, again, looking, I'm comparing these to typically like the higher yield too, so like real, I, I trust REITs, a lot of the REITs are really good, and then I trust dividend growth stocks. So, you know, my plan was that 25% that, 25% that. And then I'm gonna do 25% mid yielders. These are the S falls. These are the spy eyes of the world. These, I mean, I love these ETFs. They are like, bam, right on the money. Bam, right on the money, paying every week. Every, I mean, every month, every month, same amount, same amount. Boom, 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 boom. The capital essentially barely moves. That's good, that's perfect. And then, we have the high risk, high risk funds. These are yield max. These are defiance. You know, these are whatever's going to come out. There's, there's going to be more that are going to come out. So I'm going to do 25% in that too. And if I do that mix, I didn't run the numbers yet. I'll, 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 I'll keep you guys posted on that. But I'll run the numbers and I'll see how much do I really need at retirement if I do this mix. Plus, I, honestly, I want to live off half. I want to be able to reinvest half. That would be so nice. Um, cause then I'll, you know, I'll, I mean, realistically I should never run out of money anyway, but I'll never run out of money. So I'll have a good mixture. The, the dividend growth that hopefully will, you know, that could keep up with inflation. The REITs could too, because a lot of the real estate investment trusts, they do dividend growth as well. Okay. Obviously it's just a little risk for the real estate market. Cause you know, they could have really, really bad years. And then the mid, mid yielders. They, I'm, you know, those are my bread and butter. Those are like the safety, uh, safety nets, right? Um, so if anything, like that's that's gonna keep my income solid. And then the high yielders, obviously in the beginning, yeah, they're gonna be paying 50, 60 percent. But I need my high yielders not to drop in capital so rapidly. That is key. 
That is so key, especially if I can't reinvest all of my money, okay? So that's my goal. Why am I telling you this? Well, my wife's 401k account, which when she leaves, it'll be an IRA account, is gonna be that mix. I'm gonna start to, I'm gonna start that process, okay? Um, and the way I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna start with dividend growth, but I'm not gonna buy individual companies anymore. The main reason I, I'm not doing that is I don't have the time to do the research uh, into you know every, there, there are so many good, I mean, Procter & Gamble, Apple, Costco, Home Depot, there is so many good ones, so many good ones, but there's so many other good ones and I just, I can't do it anymore. I can't monitor it. I can't, I can't do it. So I have been always against ETFs. I'm not paying anyone. I can invest myself. That's what I always said. And then I got into this ETF world and I'm paying 0.99%. Sure enough, I'll think. Um, so long story short is I've accepted, you know, the greatness of ETFs. So that being said, uh, my, my beginning stage is do a deep down search on the best dividend growth ETFs, okay? I'm talking about SCHDs, the VIGs, uh, there's a couple others. DGROW, DGRO, there's also DGRW, which is a really good one, I gotta check that out. That, that looks at the future uh, payouts, uh, what they can pay in the future, which is really cool. So, I'm gonna start with that, because obviously, you know, that should be you know, the safe, I'd rather get the safer investment on the books and then work my way down, or up, I should say, yield-wise. So, again, when, when it comes to dividend growth, my opinion is, you know, you really, it's tough. Like, I don't want to say don't look at yield, but it's, because I, like, look at Visa, man. Visa pays the, the worst starting yield. So does Apple. But their dividend growth, their dividend growth, they could they could raise their dividend every year forever. You know, uh, of course it's going to take time for your yield on cost to get to a respectable amount, but you're going to get raises. You know, if you ever get to that 10% yield on cost, you're still going to get raises. So imagine that, right? So anyway, I like the dividend growth stocks for that reason. Um, they're safe, secure, they help you sleep at night. So that's why I'm going to put, you know, 25% into that. Okay, and then I'm gonna work on the REITs. Now the REITs are a little harder uh, because I have never heard of a good REIT ETF. I honestly never heard of a good REIT ETF. So I have my hands full with that. I know what REITs I want um, and I know what dividend growth stocks I want. So I'm gonna really judge it by that. Like it, if this ETF has, you know, if they have good rules in place, if they buy good companies, if they have good track records, you know, then I'm gonna buy them. Okay, and of course I could revisit it. I'll probably revisit it once a year. I'll see how they do. If I need to move stuff around, that's fine. Um, but yeah, so I'll do that. I'll work on the REITs. Then I'll work on the mid yielders. I have obviously I have all these companies in mind, and then I'll work on the high yielders. The high yielders, honestly, right now, it's going to be Ymax. I'm not going to mess around picking and choosing a yield max one. I'm just going to put Ymax in there. Okay, and then I am debating on defiance uh, or not at the moment because um, I'm just not sure. Um, because I, I'm gonna take it easy. I'm gonna take it nice and slow with this account because I'm pretending that this this is it. This is the account we are gonna live off of. Okay, this is it. So I'm like prepping. I'm gonna build that up. We can't touch this money until 59 and a half. My, well, actually, my wife, it's my wife's account. She can't touch it till 59 and a half. She's not even 39 yet. So we're, this is over 20 years we're talking. We can't touch the money. So hopefully I can build this baby up into a respectable amount. When she leaves her job, the 401k will be rolled over into a Roth IRA. And then at that point, I will have to, you know, right now I'm not making contributions to any Roth IRAs. Um, I'm only putting money in the taxable, but if once she uh, leaves her job, then I only have my 401k when I'm putting money into, so I'll have to do 
uh, put money into her Roth IRA. Well, actually with the rules, I don't even know if I can now that I think about it because you're supposed to have an income in order to contribute to a Roth IRA. Hmm. But anyway, that's my plan. Sorry for the air freshener. It's, uh, you know, it's all over the place. That's my plan. Um, let me know what you guys think about it. Um, you think it's a good idea? How How do you guys... Well, the other, the other reason I think it's a good idea is a lot of people have been wondering, the, you know, like, what the best retirement strategy. And keep in mind, guys, this strategy, like, I may somehow do well and retire even earlier. So... You know, if I'm able to retire in five years, 10 years, whatever, then guess what? I'm ready. I have a perfect strategy. I've been doing, you know, years in and years out, and I'll be ready. Or the other part is, you know, this helps people who are actually retired, who were trying to think of a plan. Uh, because, again, my opinion on that, I would never go all in on. You know, the yield max funds. Hell no. You know, you can't do that with your nest egg. You got to do a portion of it, man. Obviously, my taxable, I'm not living off that, guys. I'm just, I'm aggressively trying to make a high income. I'm aggressively trying to do that. And obviously, yeah, I'm learning as I go, right? So in reality, you know, if I go back, I would not put all that money in Tesla. I would spread it around. You know, I wouldn't even spend all the cash. I'd leave a percentage in cash so I can always dollar cost average every single day. Um, you know, and that's just, it's really, that's hard for me because I, I love buying stocks. So I'm like, eh. so I bought all of them right, right away. And it's just like, and the damage is, you know, you, you see the impact over time. So I hope that made sense to you guys, but that's, that's my next big uh, plan. My, my next big uh, duty here. Um, as far as my YouTube channel, um, the plan is I continue to do the daily videos on Tesla and Coney. I mean, I made a Feppy video yesterday. They're like, oh, someone wrote, thank God you're done with the daily Tesla videos. I'm like, no, I still did them. I still did a video yesterday. So yeah, I'm not done with them. Um, and I know people like them. So I like doing them. I do. Whether they, uh, you know, sometimes these fund managers give me, uh, I don't know what the word is, but you know, it could be rough because again, when you're, uh, when you're invested in yourself, you feel the pain. So, but yeah, I'm going to continue the daily Tesla videos, the daily, uh, Coney videos. Um, and then I do the weekly defiance videos, which honestly, I got to be honest, man, I did it last week. It was tough. <laughs> I'm plugging in, you know, you're plugging in five trading days for three different funds. I thought it'd be a little easier, but it's kind of, uh, you know, I'm doing this in the car as we're running errands. I'm doing this at home, you know, when there's, we're cleaning the house. Like it's just, the weekends are just chaos. So I'll, again, I'm, I have no plan on stopping doing the defines weekly, but I'll do my best to keep up with that. Now, outside of that, between those two types of videos, you know, there, there's going to be weeks where that's it. That's all you're going to get, unfortunately, because that, you know, again, me and my wife work full time. We have two kids and it's, there's no time. There is no time. So, um, but when there is time, such as my lunch break, like yesterday, I'll throw out a Feppy video. Uh, the problem is I uh, have to do some preparation, you know that obviously and obviously I'm going to do my account updates I'm never going to miss an account update because you guys I want to share you know I want to be real and share how I'm doing obviously this month coming up probably not going to look as good because the the giant dip in my over allocation to Tesla so that's going to look bad but that's it's going to make the capital look bad maybe the income is still going to be intact in though that's that's what it's all about the income um so so yeah that's that's my YouTube channel. Um, that's the future of the YouTube channel. No plans on doing anything crazy. 
No plans on interviewing Jay. Uh, I know you guys ask that all the time. Uh, I don't. I don't have the time to set that up. I don't have the, uh, you know, the uh, electronics. I, I do my crap on a phone. All right. Unless he wants to chat on the Discord, you know, it's just it's not happening. Okay. So you guys, you guys have enough interviews you can watch on Jay. You know. So, and honestly, are you are you tired of it? It's like repetitive old crap who wants to hear the same jargon over and over I know some of you think I'm going to ask better questions but it doesn't matter you'll get the same answers so you know they'll share what they want to share right? if they didn't share it by now they're not going to share it with me so just keep that in mind um, I'm at work I just got to the gym they open in 9 minutes so I got here a little early so I can hopefully hit upload and it would work sometimes these, these car videos take hours ridiculous but uh but yeah anyway this is uh car video i think it's episode 16 uh, i'll keep doing them every friday these are easy i hit record and i just yap um so hope you guys still enjoy them if you do enjoy if you did enjoy this video please let me know if you want me to chill on the tesla bitchin please let me know or if you enjoy it let me know Either way, uh, try to click that like button. It helps the videos. I know th these videos don't get a good uh, reaction, but these are easy to do for me. These are fun. I, I enjoy these the most because I don't really have an agenda. I just hit record and you just blah, right? Blah, blah, blah. I feel like I'm talking to you guys. I wish I could turn on the Discord so we can all talk together, but it, I don't think it'll do that at the same time. Um, but yeah. Anyway, thank you for watching. If you made it this far, hmm, I didn't even think about that. If you made it this far, how about um, you say, uh, all right, for my dog air freshener, this is my dog, say uh, Casey, just say your name, C-A-S-E-Y, Casey. If you just type Casey, I know you made it uh, till the end of the video, or you can write Casey rules, because uh, Casey's a very good dog. My Both my kids torture, torture her. She has never touched them. She's like so well behaved. Uh, it's amazing. But uh, but yeah, no, nah, she's a good old, she's a very old dog. But uh, I don't know. Anyway, if you made it that far, just type Casey. And then, then I know, then I know you're good. You made it. But I hope you guys enjoy your commutes. You're probably commuting now listening to this. Um, hopefully, you know, drive safely. Obviously, this is a, this is, this is a podcast. Okay. This is not a video. This is not meant for video. All right. If it was, no one would watch it. So, anyway, I got to go get a good workout in. I'm going to do legs. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do at lunch. I'll figure that out later. But it's a two-a-day, finally. Woo! Oh, by the way, I'm down seven pounds on the diet. I'm still going. Uh, I weigh in every Monday. We'll see how it goes. Uh, I only want to lose about seven more, then I'm good. But, you know, we'll see. I signed up for a half marathon, so I got a lot of work ahead of me. Anyway, I'm out of here. Have a great day, everyone. Later.